Hi, in this video, we're gonna go through the different ways you can attach one object instance to another instance. I'm gonna do a platformer example with a gun in the player's hands and a top-down example with a rotating ship that has cannons. I have a basic character that moves left and right and turns. It takes input from the D and A keys, adds that to the X position, and based on that input value, it also sets the horizontal scale. First, let's set up an attached gun that is created through code. In the create event of the player, you're first gonna create the instance for the object you want to attach and store its handle in a variable. For me, it's a gun. Then let's create variables for how far that gun is gonna be from the coordinates of the player. For now, let's keep it at zero. Now in the step event, let's set the X position of the gun by adding the gun X variable to the X of the player. Then let's do the same with the Y. Run the game and I don't see anything. It's because the gun is behind the player. So I'll change the depth I created at to be a bit less than the player's so it's closer to the camera. If you run the game now, you'll see the gun sticks to the player but it only ever faces one way. For this in the step event, we want to set the image X scale of the gun to be the same as the player. Now it faces the way the player faces. Now if you want it to not be in the exact center and be in the player's hands instead, you can try and figure out how far away it should be from the player's origin. I'm gonna set the values to 150 for now. And you can see it is a bit displaced now, but if you turn around, the location doesn't flip. So for this, you also need to flip the X distance with the X scale. So you multiply the gun X with the X scale now run the game and it works perfectly with flipping. So you've now attached an instance to another instance and it works with flipping. But this method wasn't the best because you have to figure out the numbers on your own. It would be more convenient if you could place it there yourself. So let's see how we can do that. Let's go in the room and place the gun on the player where we want it to be. Now double click on the gun instance and give it a name. I'll call it player underscore gun. Now in the create event of the player, instead of creating a new instance, you can just use the instance that you created in the room. And for the distance variables, you figure out the initial distance between them using simple subtraction. So this now stores how far away the gun is supposed to be from the player based on how you placed it in the room. The rest of the code should still work the same. So if you run the game, you'll see the gun stays where you placed it. In the room, you can go back and move the gun to a different position just to test it. And in the game, it will respect that position. Of course, this only works if the gun just stays in one place. But if your player has an animation where its hands move and you want to attach a gun or anything to any moving part of your instance, then you can use this free tool called Attach Point that I made some time ago for this exact purpose. Now let's see how you can attach these two cannons to this rotating ship. For the movement of this ship, I'm taking input from the WASD keys. I'm applying the horizontal input to the direction and the vertical input to the speed. The direction is then applied to the image angle so the ship visibly rotates as well. This gives us our basic ship movement. Also keep in mind for this, the sprites are facing right by default because zero degrees by default faces right. Now in the room, let's go and place the cannons on the ship. I'll name this one Cannon L. I'll place the second one here and name this Cannon R. Now for the code, I'm gonna give you a system where you can add an endless number of attachments to this object. So it's gonna be super easy to add new attachments. Let's create an array to store all the attachments of this instance. Then let's make a function that you can call whenever you want to add a new attachment. This function will take one argument, which is the instance you want to attach. So this instance must already exist when you call the function. 
In the function, we are going to push a new value into the attached array. The value we are pushing is a struct because we need to store multiple values for the attached instance. And structs are great when you want to store multiple variables in one place. The first value is the instance itself, so we can actually move it. The second value is the distance from the current instance to the attached instance. And since that functions as a length of our vector, I'm calling it len. Then we have the direction from the current instance towards the attached instance. So with the length and the direction, we can figure out the new position of the attached object as the ship rotates. Now at the end of the create event, let's call this function twice to add both of our cannons to the attached array. In the step event, we want to allow all the attachments to rotate and move with the instance. So let's run the array for each function on the attached array, which calls a function on every item in the array. This function is going to receive one argument, which is the item that is stored in the array. We know that we have stored structs in the array, so we can use the values that we stored in the structs and do whatever with them. First of all, I'm going to calculate the x distance for the item. We are using the length there x function to get the x component of a vector or a line. The vector is going to use the length we stored for the attachment and then it's going to use the direction which on its own should give us the distance from the current instance to the attached instance. But we're going to add the image angle of the ship to the direction. This is how we keep it where it's supposed to be, but also keep it rotating with the image angle of the instance. Then let's do the same for the y distance of the attachment. Now that we have the distance, we can set the position of the attached instance. Remember what we get here is a struct, so we need the instance from that, and then we can set its x. This will be the x of the ship plus the distance that we just calculated. Then we just do the same for the y. Finally, let's also set the image angle of the attachment. Now if you run the game and drive the ship, you'll see the attachments stay where they're supposed to be. But if you rotate any of the cannons in the room editor, that rotation won't be preserved in the game. So for this, we need to store another value in the struct when adding an attachment. This will be the image angle of the instance stored as the angle variable. Then in the step event, when you set the image angle of the attached instance, you simply add the original angle to it. Now in the game, the rotation will be preserved. So your attachments are working perfectly now. You can make them do whatever you want, like shoot projectiles, and they can, for example, take collisions and be damaged. And with this system, adding more attachments is super easy because you can just call the add attached function with the handle of the instance that you want to attach. So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe for more game maker tutorials and I will see you in the next one.